Hello everyone, how are y'all doing today? This is B-Bell Dan and welcome to episode 3 of this project series where I am constructing a fully puppeteered Skeksis head. I'm doing this in honor and kind of a celebration for the upcoming Netflix series The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. A prequel, so to say, to kind of delve into the world that was created by Jim Henson and his movie company way back in the 1980s. It is a movie that I love and the Skeksis creatures inside that movie, the villains, really kind of always had a, a certain place, you might probably say, within my own imagination. So I decided to go ahead and try to go ahead and see if I can construct one, but not just the model of the head, but it's going to be fully puppeteered, cable controlled, just like how they did in the old days, and we'll see how that goes. If you remember in the last episode, I've actually started working and I've completed pretty much the mechanism for the eyes. Now I ran out of the original red filament that I was using, so I bought some blue filament, so that's why it's shifting into blue. But now I have working eye mechanisms. The eyes, as we can see, move side to side. They're gonna move side to side with a cable that will pull this mechanism here to cause the eyes to turn, and both of the eyes will blink. I'm still deciding on the look that I want to go with it, still working on a couple of other designs, and I'm kind of more leaning towards one or two in particular, so I might take the two that I like and combine them together to create a third one. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, now that I got this, I could to do the rest of the mechanisms, I could continue to add on to this base, but the problem is if I have more like, you know, pillars and structure inside here to mount all the cables and pulleys and things, it's going to start getting a little bit heavy. And because the neck is going to move, I want to try to keep as much weight off that as possible. So I'm going to have to build some of that, some of the cables, and keep it very simple into the actual skull so this space here is not cluttered but before I could start designing the skull and 3d printing that I can go into a 3d program and try to design it out but I'll waste a lot of fill of it so what am I going to do to design the skull and some of the mechanisms and make sure that everything looks good and works good before I waste the filament and the time designing it and 3d printing it very easy. Cardboard. Lots and lots of cardboard. Alright, I have everything here that I need to go ahead and get started. Went ahead and took that box and cut it down to some more manageable pieces for me to work with. And here is the mechanism. I got it kind of cleaned up with the screws as you can see here. They're trimmed just to the right length. They're about four millimeters each now and they go in enough to where they grip onto this base here or to this uh, eye stock here without colliding into the eyeballs. So what I'm wanting to do here is build kind of a temporary rough cardboard skull that will closely mimic the actual skull that I'll be 3D printing and making later. I just want to use cardboard because, like I said, I don't want to keep using up 3D filament because even though it's relatively cheap, um, it still costs money. Cardboard is pretty much almost free. You can find it just about anywhere. In fact, I can even use the box that I bought the 3D filament in. And if I mess up, I just simply just tear it all apart and start all over again. So I'm going to be Fastening this all together using a mixture of hot glue, tape, and I got all my other utensils here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And first, what I'm going to do is build a, you know, where the beak is going to be coming out of this here. I'm going to kind of build that up. And then we're going to build the eye sockets. And what I'm going to try to work on here is the eyebrow mechanism to make it to where the eyebrow moves is going to be built into that skull, which is why I need to do this. Uh, so I can plan out with the cardboard how that mechanism is going to work and also where I'm going to run the cables and how I'm going to connect them 
to the actual skull that's going to have the cables or the wires running through that's going to make the eyes blink as well as the eyes move up and down and other things such as that. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to take a small piece here. The other thing that with cardboard is that you can pretty much already go ahead and bend it as long as you keep it along these grooves here. So let me go ahead and plan that out and see what we get. So I just take the pieces of cardboard, trim them up a little bit, hold it up to the what I got so far to the puppet head, see where does that look. Tending that this is going to be where the top of the beak is going to be running out. Look at that and not not bad, not bad. That actually looks pretty good. So once again, imagine the top of the beak coming out here and continuing down that way. So I'm going to go ahead and use some hot glue. We're going to just temporarily, whoops, hold that on. So since, since this is temporary, don't need a whole lot because I'm going to be popping this all off again. And I'm using a low temp glue gun because I don't, I don't know exact temperatures of how hot these glues get, but I don't want the temperature to be too hot to where it could potentially melt through or warp this. But even if it does, I can always print out another one. All right, so we got that on. So that's our first base. Now we're going to start working on the eye stock, or not eye stock, the uh, eye sockets. So what I do is I just take a piece of cardboard, hold it up and we trace out and do some cutting, but I already got one planned out right here. Haha, -ha, I thought ahead. And I think this one goes on to this side here, or is it this? I think it's this side right here. Oops, just need to lower this down. There we go, there we go. Y'all could probably see right there. There we go. So let me go ahead and duplicate this for the other side, minus some small little, um, let's see, uh, let's go ahead and bring that down right there, minus some small adjustments that I might have to make. We'll go ahead and cut this out, then I'll glue both those pieces on and we'll go from there. All right. What do y'all think so far? It's starting to look real mean, isn't it? Also kind of just taking the shape, just amazing about how just a little bit of cardboard kind of gives it a whole new dynamic almost. You can almost kind of see the face coming off of it. So now the next thing I'm going to go ahead and try to work on is the eyebrow mechanism, which the eyebrow, rather than trying to come up with a whole other stock, or pole and have the mechanism mounted on that. I'm going to see if there's any way that I could possibly have the mechanism built in to the skull itself with the cables that will run it running up along the skull and down through the spine. That way I could try to keep as much of this space here available as possible. So one, it's not weighed down by this extra weight and two, I'm also going to need to have cables running through here that's going to be controlling the sneer on the beak itself. So I need to keep this as free as possible. I don't want to get this cluttered up too much. And then from there, we're going to try to come up with the top of the skull and figure out a way to uh, mount the cabling that's going to control the eyelids themselves. What I'm thinking about doing is at the top of the skull, having the cables run along this way and then also mounted from the top of the skull will be two pulleys maybe where that cable runs down and connects to this so when you pull back it tightens up against that pulley and pulls straight back maybe we'll see that's why I'm wanting to kind of experiment around with this so but first let's tackle that uh, the eyebrows which is just going to be a simple single pivot point right here and the eyebrow 
that's going to be moving is going to be on the outside like this. So the mechanism there's going to be that is attached to, or the hinge or the arm that's attached to, is going to be inside here. So, and also the spring as well that will allow it to. Actually, no, we won't do any spring. It'll be just simply held by tension through the cable. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Got plenty of cardboard left, so let me see what I can probably come up with. And there's the eyebrow mechanism. It's very crude, but that's the purpose of this, is for it to be very crude because this is just a prototype rough template it's not moving quite the way that I was hoping that it would, but it's cardboard, so it has a lot of flex into it. The joints are very flimsy, but if it works this well with just cardboard, imagine about how much better it's going to work once it's actually you know, made out of some hard, rough materials. And for the internal mechanisms, I'm going to get a smaller gauge cable. This cable tends to be a little bit too thick, so it's not having as much flexibility as I might need it. So I'm going to try getting something a bit thinner at the hardware store, some thinner pipes, some thinner or tubing, some thinner metal uh, wire, and we'll go from there. But the mechanism is actually pretty much straightforward, if you can see it right there. All it is is just that I have the piece of cardboard here connected through a hinge with this little arm bracket right there. And this arm bracket can be adjustable. So as you probably see, it's kind of moving right now to where I can make it to where, whoops, sorry. Yeah, just like right that. This is kind of just temporarily tacked on. The other one's gonna be permanent, but it's adjustable right now. So I can make sure that when I make it to where he is fully, you know, er in his mad state, this isn't bumping up anywhere, so I can hold this down, adjust this slightly, there we go, and then I have more room to move everything. But yeah, so we got that. I think that would kind of work out. So all I need to do is just mimic that on the other side if this was indeed going to be fully out of cardboard or any other materials, but since I'm gonna 3D print off of this, I think I just need to do the one side. but So let me go ahead and continue on with this and actually do the dome and get kind of an idea of how to operate these internal eyelids. So let me work on that. Okay, and I think this is going to work. What do you all think? Let's go ahead. I have a bicycle cable here that I purchased and seems like it is definitely working so all it is is just I don't know if y'all can see all it is is just by simply attaching it to a point on the top of the skull the cable has enough play into it enough freedom of movement to where it can bend and still function with the eyelid now at this point there's enough friction in it to where I guess in the bend of the cable to where it it can kind of hold in certain positions. The spring that I have in it doesn't seem to really kind of be in any particular effect with the way the eye opens and closes. But that's kind of the way that I'm intending for this to be because these cables here and here are all gonna be running back to a control rod. That's, depending on how I move that control rod, is gonna cause the eyes to blink, the eyelids to move, everything else to function. We get, so right now we have the eyebrow movement and the eyelid movement. And we still have a lot of space off here inside the skull for me to A, work in and to run some more additional cables in. So I'm going to use this cardboard layout as a template for me to design a very similar structure that is going to fit on this base that all of these cables are going to be running along into and connected to that's going to allow me to operate and control. 
So it's starting to kind of take shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at that control rod that I was talking about earlier and see what we can do with that. Okay, moving along from the head. In the last episode, you also remember that I started working on the, or at least one half of the two control mechanisms that's going to be used to puppeteer the whole head. And so far, I've got this. I'm still waiting to try to get some bearings to fit into here to kind of make this joint move just a little bit smoother, even though it's doing a pretty good job right now. The business that I was getting the bearings from locally stopped selling them for some reason. So I'm going to start looking online or a couple of other local places to see if I can find those bearings elsewhere, keep them cheap. Uh, but we're going to continue adding on to this. So we have one and two degrees of movement, but now we need to go ahead and start working on the other two degrees, which is going to be the stick control that we have right here. And I have a couple of ideas on how to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to do that. Okay, here we are with this control mechanism that I worked off in the last episode. Now here, I'm going to have mount a joystick controller with two uh, points of movement that those two points of movement can be translated back to the original puppet head that I'm creating. Now what those two are going to control, I don't know yet. They could either be controlling uh, a sneer, they can be blinking the eyes, or they could be translated into the movements of the head. So don't know yet, but I do know I need to have that joystick control here. Now since I've already started making this out of household materials rather than let's say 3D print or print it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with this one. So the second one I'll be making, I'll probably be 3D printing a lot of that type, a lot of that stuff. Uh, but this one we're going to continue making. So I'm going to need some more uh, pivot points, joints, and things like that. So how am I going to go ahead and create those? Well, I went down to the hardware store and I bought a package of these. This came in a package of four of these little angle brackets, and they were about three dollars each and what I did is I took these and I decided to cut them into three individual pieces so I was able to get three out of just one of these ones and all I need is two of them mounted like that and that right there will give me the pivot point that I'm going to mount the joystick on now I'm going to use a simple wooden dowel rod to go ahead and make the joystick. I already got a couple of holes drilled out and I can cut this to size as I need to afterwards. But before I do that, I went ahead and we'll mount this first and then I can take away, because I can always take away, I can't add back on as easily. So using these, these, some washers, and a couple of nuts and bolts and some screws and two blocks of wood, we're going to go ahead and create that joystick. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, for this first joint, I just took one of these outside angle brackets that I cut off. I had to lengthen the hole a little bit to accommodate this bolt. But what I do is I just simply put the bolt through, and I'm going to put two washers inside there to kind of act not only as spacers, but also kind of a makeshift... Um, a makeshift bearing so to say to where these will help kind of rub against each other with the wood I could put just a little bit of oil a little bit of lubrication right there and I should get a relatively smooth motion on that and then I'm going to take the other one oops, not that one this one right here and just put it in and then put the bolt on that right there creates our first pivot point so now we're going to go ahead and take these and mount them onto this and that's going to then take the next piece and put them on to create the next joints let me go ahead and work on those all right for that next joint we're going to go ahead and take one of these little middle pieces here that we have because it's slightly longer and we're going to go ahead and butt it up against like this so we have a bolt we're going to go ahead and feed that onto the inside like so and put on a washer. Once again, the washer is going to kind of act as a 
makeshift bearing for right now until I can get uh, more bearings that might be able to fit in for smoother motion. Put it in like so. And just put your nut on like that. And once again, I could use a lock washer and I'm probably going to go back and replace all these with lock washers just to prevent this from coming loose or I might use a little bit of Loctite on this once I get everything fixed so I know I don't have to take this apart to get it to where that nut won't be coming loose because after a while it's going to start working its way loose. So I don't want, it's not a permanent uh, solution right now but for right now just to test this out I think that will work. So now I'm going to take these and these and mount these on together first but as you can see right there this is going to give us that second little pivot point. So let me go ahead and connect these up and then I'll put this on and I'll be right back. Alright and here is the mechanism. So as you can see kind of how it works we have the pivot point, the axis right there and we also have the axis right there so we can just move this around relatively freely in all directions. A couple of little things to kind of uh, work out such as the screws were just slightly too long so they kind of poke out so I wanted to go ahead and try to file those down and I need to also file down the areas where I cut because there's some burrs here that catch every once in a while. Plus also the mentioned uh, finding a way to keep those nuts to where they don't twist off as it moves. But other than that, I think that's working out very nicely. So let's go ahead and try to see if we can mount it onto this and see what we got. And here is the rough prototype fully completed. Yeah, you know, that actually feels pretty good. It's actually a little bit better than what I probably thought it would have felt like. You know, we have one, two, three, and four degrees of movement that can be translated straight to the puppet and kind of you know playing with this just a little bit I'm almost certain to where this could actually translate very well to the complete neck and head movements this right here would be like lower part of the neck and this right here would be kind of where the neck meets the spine you know the puppet turns left to right to look tilts the head back, tilts the head down, looks down, kind of turns the head side to side, you know, look to the side, look to the right, look to the left, look up, look down, you know, yeah, I think that is going to work out very well. To continue on with this, I'm either going to try to run some support that comes up to connect to this, or I might be able to do away with this joint completely and just support it and strengthen it here. Maybe weld a small piece of steel and do a steel backplate all around here so it's nice and supported or get a longer piece of metal with holes in it and bend it and make it back here so I don't even really probably need this. I mean this right here feels very good. I'm going to trim off some of this excess wood that I really don't need. Now as far as, and also probably start looking at connecting the cables. To, for this, I'm just going to have cut this off maybe right about here, put a little eyelet inside there, a little uh, you know, eye loop, and have the cables connect to that, and then run the cables down along the side of this, maybe along here. So as I move it, I pull this, it pulls the cable, pull it back, it shoots back, you know, forward, backwards, same thing. I'll figure out cable arrangements, but as far as what I intended for this to work completely to operate, I think this is going to work out very well, so I'm getting very excited. And with all of that, I conclude this episode. We've actually got quite a bit accomplished today. We started working on one of the control mechanisms that is going to be used to puppeteer the entire Skex's head and neck, as well as come up with some pretty rough prototypes, but ideas of where to head to for the rest of the mechanisms with the upper portion of the head, mainly the eyebrows, 
and the eyelid mechanism. So from this point on, what I'm going to do and prepare for the next episode is I'm going to go ahead and take this rough template that we have out of cardboard and start designing that in a 3D program and printing it out. Now I could continue to use cardboard with it, but as we've seen, a lot of the issues that we're having is because the cardboard is flimsy, it's not supporting a lot of the work, which is why, or a lot of the load, which is why I need it to be out of a more sturdier 3D printed material. And cardboard could potentially work. You could make a puppet out of cardboard. In fact, be looking forward to that in a, another web series. But, you know, but for the sake of this project, I want to go ahead and 3D print it because I have that capability with me with my 3D printer. So from this point on, I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to try to be kind of making this look a little bit more professional, sturdy up the joints a little bit, maybe give it a fresh coat of paint. But from the future, what we need to be working on is I need to really start getting the design of what this Skeksis is going to look like. So... I'm going to have to start thinking about that. But another thing that we're also going to be looking at in the next episode is the lower mouth mechanism to go ahead and start working on that. And once we get that done, then we can start getting a good idea with the weight of the head so we can start developing the neck and figure out what type of neck mechanism that it needs to be able to move the head all around and support the weight. The other thing that we're also going to need to work on is also a way to attach this to the head. Now we could run the cable straight from the head to the arm, but I have something else in plan for that. So we're going to look at that in the next episode. So with that, I just want to say my name is B-Belt Dan. This is the Puppeteered Skexis Head Project. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.